and um, hitting record. So I want to welcome everyone to our team call. We have uh, 44, 45 people. So we're, we're, we got a lot of people on here who wants to know Sarah's secrets. So Sarah, Sarah Brett is a, a new diamond coach, relatively new, right? This year, um, I'm sure she'll tell you more about her story but she has been tearing it up. You guys have seen her like in the top of the leaderboards. You, you've seen her post about, you know, bringing in a thousand free customers uh, or free, you know, people to her challenge group every single month. Um, so, you know, I wanted to invite her on instead of one of our top coaches so that we can find out, you know, what one of our own is doing to be very successful. So Sarah, why don't you go ahead and take it away? You got it. Um, I have honestly about 10 pages of notes. I really have typed out every single aspect of my process. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on my background. Um, I pretty much have a little bit of a weight loss story, but all of that happened before I found Beachbody. Um, so it wasn't like P90X or Insanity transformed my life. Um, Beachbody programs have just helped me to maintain my weight loss. And then the coaching has kind of just obviously allowed me to pursue more of the, um, the passion that I found for, you know, the health and fitness and nutrition field. Um, but what I'm really going to talk about tonight is my process for running free challenges. Um, I will start by saying, and I'm probably going to say this 10 more times on the call tonight, that this process didn't happen overnight. I didn't you know, well, okay, I kind of woke up one month and it all of a sudden clicked, but it's not like I just started my process for the first time that month. I have been running free monthly groups since November, and it wasn't until June that they really took off. Um, I did a lot of watching other coaches, Jatana, Leah, Deirdre, learning what they do, and throughout all of it, I took little bits of what they do in their process and made it my own. And that's really my underlying theme. I'm honestly, I'm going to spill my guts and tell you everything I do, but I'm probably going to say 10 times, um, take it and make it your own. Uh, if you start targeting exactly the same people that I target because it works for me, you're selling me. You're not selling you and, and what you have to offer and the people that you relate to. So you can take my process, but I really encourage you to make Make it your own and make it relatable to you and the people that you relate to in your market. So getting started here. Step number one of everything I do. Um, I do these challenges every single month, um, always starting on the first of the month. And my step one in the process is deciding on a theme. Um, I've done buns and guns. I've done abs. I'm doing a back to school challenge right now for the month of September. So you want your groups to have some sort of theme. Otherwise, the purpose uh, is sort of scatterbrained all over the place. People don't really understand. Um, if I run out of ideas, sometimes I've asked my members in my group, what do you want to see next month? Like if I'm hitting a roadblock, I'll say, hey, what are you in the mood for next month? And let them inspire me or, or like get my creative juices flowing. They'll say something that'll spark something and then I go from there. Um, Next, I will prepare the daily workouts. This is, uh, this takes some time, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it includes putting together compilations of, of exercises, you know, whether it's five, six, 10 exercises they'll see in a given day and figuring out, okay, how can I make these, arrange them in a logical order um, so that they, they make sense, they progress. Um, Sometimes it's helpful to start backwards because I, I never want to get to a point where I'm at the day 30 and it's 100 push-ups, 100 squats, and 100 sit-ups. That's ridiculous. So sometimes it works to reverse engineer it and think about the end result. Think about something that's challenging but not super out of reach. I, I will admit my challenges get pretty intense. Uh, the ladies in the group rise to the occasion and, and they do them, so I continue to push them. They see a lot of moves from... Insanity Max 30 and 21 Day Fix and, and all of the Beachbody workouts is actually where I pull a lot of my inspiration for the daily workouts. So, um, but when you're preparing the daily workout, sort of, you know, think to your, your target audience. I, I target a, a pretty young female athletic population. So as long as they can hang, I keep pushing them a little bit harder each month. Um, next, this is sort of step 2A, is making daily posts uh, for the workouts. I do use... Um, stock photos that I bought. I, I forget 
um, which website I use, it might have been stockphoto.com is, is the one that I had purchased um, photos from. So I, I make sure that I do have a really pretty image. Um, it's the same image that is shown every single day, and I basically just rewrite over top of it, um, you know, the exercises they're going to see in a given day. So, for example, I'll write, you know, 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 squats. Um, I keep the photo just for exercises, um, and oftentimes, this is just for reuse purposes, because sometimes they may see the same the same photo with the same number of, of exercises may appear multiple times throughout the month, but I use Hootsuite to schedule the, um, the post, the photo to go up each day. And in my description on Hootsuite, that's where I write any specific instructions like, um, you know, 10 alternating lunges means five on each leg or do 10 of every exercise listed below and repeat times three. So I keep the photos sort of generic for reuse purposes, but then in the, um, the text of what I'm gonna post, what automatically gets posted on Hootsuite, it has further instructions for clarifying. Um, I also brand every photo that they see in a month. I make sure I um, put my website on the bottom of every photo. Um, next is, any supplemental advertising you're going to do as you're getting ready to promote this challenge. So this could include, um, like if you have a blog or something, um, I always update the, you know, the hungry runners up, upcoming free fitness group page of my blog with just a quick photo. It's oftentimes it's the same photo that I'm using, um, for the month, like the daily posts for the month. So they sort of, you know, see, at least when they see that photo and they see it again, it's, Sometimes it's the same photo I use in my ads, so they sort of kind of put it all together. Um, but just a quick little description and a link on there for how to like, or instructions for how to join the group page. So do any additional advertising. Um, the next step is, is the big one, um, is creating the event. So I have played around with, you know, I said I've had free groups running since November. Um, I have played around with different methods of how to get people into this, the group, and I have found that the event to group method works best. So I recommend creating this event from your like page or somewhere, whatever page you have that has the most traffic. Um, so if you have a like page that has 150 likes, the chances of hosting an event that gets 1,000 people to RSVP, probably not very likely. Um, but so if, if you're still getting your, your like page up and running, maybe you want to focus on doing some at, targeted ads for likes to sort of build up the traffic on your site first. And then this might work because my, my, web, my website honestly didn't have that much or my like page didn't have that much traffic. Um, before and that's why I was you know back in November December January I was getting maybe 30 40 60 I was like really excited one month when I got a hundred people to join my event But the more traffic that I have and more likes I have on my like page now is just more eyes seeing everything So that's why I run my events through my like page because it has way more traffic um, than my regular page so here are the details of the event um, number one event photo it's controversial, I know, I swear, I do not have anyone on the inside, but pick something eye-catching, sexy, like push the limits. I mean, I honestly cannot tell you how I've gotten some of the photos approved that I've gotten approved, but you're at the risk here of getting your ad denied. Um, I, I don't know why mine get approved and people can put up the, a similar post and have them denied. Um, I, I was working with Lisa a little bit this month and... Um, she found that sort of, you know, using a, a, a photo of a woman, you know, in a sports bra with her abs showing, um, but putting your text over the ab area seemed to work. That's, that's what I had on mine for this month, and it, and it worked. Um, I think my original Buns and Guns one, I don't think there was any text on it at all. Um, but, you know, I recommend using something that's eye catchy, you know, people, people want the appeal of, you know, that, that good looking person. They're like, Oh yeah, I want to look like her when this challenge is done. So pick a catchy photo. Um, the event title, I always say free 30 day blank challenge, put free, like in all caps, 
right, right in the event. So that when the event shows up, the first thing that they're seeing is a free challenge. They're immediately not turned off by the possibility that they may have to pay for it. Um, the location of the event, I always put your home. They're at home workouts and they can be done, you know, wherever. Um, date and time, I always put the first of the month and um, usually don't put a time on there and don't put an end, end date or end time. It's just September 1st was, is the only thing I put in there as far as date time goes. Um, description, this is the meat and potatoes. Uh, it contains a lot of the event details. Some people may want to make it more short and sweet and concise, but I literally spell it all out here in the description. Um, if you want to know anything about how the challenge is going to work, my, my description honestly is this long, but whatever, all the details are in there. So I usually begin with like a quick intro, something to, to catch their attention that'll get them reading further. Um, summer may be coming to an end, but it's never too late for a quick 30 minute workout to sculpt some sexy abs or something like that. Um, and then I, I pose a few questions. Um, are you ready for a change? Do you want to develop healthy new habits, et cetera? It's, this, it's the same kind of stuff you would put in like a challenge group teaser post. Ask a few questions and then, you know, well, if you said yes to any of the above, this free blank challenge is for you. It will only take a few minutes to complete, but it'll be time well spent. Um, then I proceed to tell them how to join the challenge. Um, this is uh, somewhere where I have learned along the way and I have tweaked how they join the challenge. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about some mistakes I've made so that hopefully you can learn from them um, in a little bit. But the process now for getting into the group is step one is to like my page, my like page where I'm running the ad. Because when I boost this ad, I know people that haven't already liked my page are going to be seeing it based on how I target. So step one is to like my page. Um, and I always say, like my page so that you're guaranteed to see all posts and updates from me um, regarding how to enter this challenge. And you can access my page here. And I put the link right in there. Um, truth is, they will see all of the updates no matter what because I'm posting them in the event page where they already are. But this is basically a way that I double dip and use my boosted ad to get more likes on my page as well rather than paying I don't pay for likes do a like campaign anymore I basically boost an event and tell anyone that joins the event to like my page to see the uh, all the details um, and then step two is to request access to the private group via a link that will be provided in the event page on X day of the week so I'll create my event on like the 27th, 28th of the month. And each day I put a post in there, hey, make sure you like my page. Have you liked my page yet? Be sure to like my page at this link in order to receive information when the group page goes live. Um, so I give them about two or three days where I remind them, like my page, like my page, like my page. And then um, they will, they'll get uh, a link to the group will be posted in the event on like the 30th of the month. After I tell them step one and step two on how to join the challenge, I do, um, I just, I state the expectations or just how the group's gonna work. Every morning, um, beginning September 1st, I will post the workout in the group page. Um, your job is to complete the workout and when you are done, post done, comment done on, on the, the workout for the day. Um, and then I tell them, you know, why do I want to, why do I care that you comment and let me know that you finished the workout? And I just say, hey, you know, because I'm here to keep you accountable. I, I want to make sure that you finish this challenge to the end. Oh, and by the way, there's prizes for the person, you know, for people that are, are regularly active in the group and posting a lot. Um, and then finally, in the description, I put just one last little clause. And it just says that I'm, I'm not a doctor. Listen to your body. If you need modifications on anything, send me a private message. I'd be more than happy to work with you on that. Um, and then at the very end of the description, I reiterate. So just a reminder, in the two steps to join, like my page and then keep an eye out for the group link where you request access and that'll be provided on August 30th. Um, so then I post the event and I boost it. When I, I boost the event, I create a custom audience that's gonna be targeted. Um, my target audience is not people that are interested in health, fitness, 
weight loss, nutrition. Um, I get a little more specific than that. Um, I do have, I do target all females and I do have a very small age range that I target. Um, and then I think when you're boosting, it allows you to pick up to like four common interests that the person has. So I usually do running or marathons because that's my niche is runners. So I, I do want to attract um, the people that are interested in running, but then I play up my audience, my people right now. So I target females that are interested in big, shiny engagement rings, luxurious honeymoons, wedding dresses, all of these people because they're my people right now. I can relate to these engaged brides-to-be who want to look fabulous on their wedding day and their honeymoon. So once again, you're like, I'm, I'm giving you all my tips and tricks for this. It's probably not going to work if you start targeting people that are interested in engagement rings, honeymoons, and wedding dresses if you're a dude. It's not, they're probably not going to have the same results for you if you do that as it does me. So again, take your ad boosting and tweak it to your people. Um, like I said, I learned a lot from Leah, but that doesn't mean that when I started running ads, I was targeting horse lovers. That, that wouldn't make sense for me. Um, so someday, you know, I'll probably change, do more focus targeting on moms when, when I'm a mom, but that's not me right now, so that's not who I target. Yeah, I get moms because they're people that are interested in the running niche that I have going on there, but um, in general, I, I target more people that, that have going on in their life right now what I do, and that's, that's wedding stuff right now. Um, I boost my event for two days. So like I said, I, I will create the event on like the 27th or 28th of the month, depending on how many days we have. I boost it for two days, $5 a day. So I spend a grand total of $10 per month to boost an event. Um, also, another bonus, now that I have over 3,000 people in my group that's, that's running, um, I use them for referrals. It's just like the way that we use, um, you know, when you're talking to somebody about a challenge group and they say, oh, I'm not interested in it right now, and then you ask them, oh, okay, you know, well, Keep me in mind if you have anybody that you know who might be interested in something like this. Um, the people that participate in my group actively are pretty loyal to me at this point. Um, they're enjoying it. They're coming back every day. They're getting results. So I put a post in my current group that's, you know, on day 27 or 28, you know, we're wrapping out the month. They're, they're feeling great, having better energy, seeing some results. And I say, you know, hey, this month has been really great. I'm in the works uh, for your next upcoming challenge, and it's gonna be a good one. So feel free to invite any friends, family, coworkers that you think might enjoy this challenge. And I say, all you have to do is copy and paste the URL from this group and share it on your Facebook wall. Um, or you can just directly like share the group page. And I think this month I had maybe, uh, 16 or 18 people, I kept getting tagged in, in things every day of people just sharing my event. Hey, this is a great challenge. The workouts are quick. They're effective. I'm feeling better. Sarah's really encouraging and motivating. So why not take advantage of, you know, the people I already have in my group who are, are loving what I have and get some free advertising from them. So in addition to my boost, I have referrals going out there. Um, now that, you know, the event was posted, like I said, three to four days before the start of the challenge. Um, each day, go in there, remind them, like my page, like my page. And then on, um, I, oh, I stress to them that the, um, the group link is going to be posted and all you have to do is click on the link and, um, it's a closed group. So you have to request to join and then I approve them. But honestly, I just go in and uh, like approve people on mass. So it's not really that much of a burden for me. Um, but before I provide the link in the event, um, say day 29 or day 30, I go into my existing group, and yes, I do use the same, it's the same group every single month. The only thing that changes is, is the workout. So the same people that have been in it since November, unless they have removed themselves, like there's no getting out of my groups. You're, you're stuck with me, basically. Um, so on day 29 or 30, I go into the group and get it ready for the next batch of people. Um, I don't add them until like the day before, the first, or sometimes, like I think this weekend I added them on 
the 30th of the month um, because I, I found that if I add them too early, they start getting hung up on um, like the day 26, 27 um, workouts that are being posted from, from the last month's challenge. And they're all like, oh, I don't know how to do these workouts. Oh, I don't know how to do this. And so it just saves myself a little bit of having to repeat myself all the time and be like, hold up, hold up. Like your instructions are coming next. They're coming tomorrow. So only add them like a day, maybe two before. Um, but a couple other things that I do to prime my group for adding the next batch of participants. Um, I make video demos of every single move they're going to see that month. Um, like I said, a lot of my moves come from Max 30 or Pio or 21 Day Fix. And so, you know, I call them by the name that they are in, in Max 30, um, like Iron Legs. So if people see that on a workout, they have no clue what that means. So that's why I think it's important that I go through at the beginning of the month and I do, usually I break it down. I usually make about three videos and I, I just demo real quick. I mean, even everything from push up and jumping jack, like just cover my bases right off the get-go, and I, uh, I make video demos for there. And I also include like a quick welcome message. Like at the beginning of the first video, I just say, hey, like I'm so excited to have all of you who are joining us for the first time in the challenge, and I'm even more excited about all of you who were with me in months past and have hung around this long and you're ready for some more this month. Um, and I just do a little bit, oh, okay, this month we're gonna be focusing on this, this, and this, and you know, whatever, just a quick little intro. I, um, I post the videos straight in the group page, but I also upload them to YouTube so that I can have a link for the videos. Um, because I learned the hard way that very quickly in a group of 3000 things get buried. Uh, people have, you know, have, are going back and commenting on posts from like weeks and weeks and weeks ago. And then my most recent stuff gets buried. So although I do post the video demos straight to the group page, Every month, I update the description of the group with the links to the three videos because I get asked a bazillion times how to do certain moves. Um, and so it's really easy for me to say, hey, just go look at the top right of the group page where it says description and you'll find my videos that explain every move that you'll see this month. Um, I also put um, just a, a real quick welcome posts in, in the group. I, I get that set in there before I add the new people. It's also just a way for me to let um, my current challengers know, hey, there's gonna be an influx of people coming into this group. Don't scare them away. Uh, don't let them know what they're in for. Let them just find out for themselves. Um, so then on the day before the challenge begins, go back to the original event that was boosted, pop in there the link for the group page. Something about, hey, all right, everyone, like the moment you've been waiting for, I really play it up. You know, here is your link to get access to the private group where the daily workouts will be posted. And all I do is slap the link for my group in there. Um, now, the addition of people, like I said, is very easy for me now. I, I will tell you a little bit more about this um, when I talk about some, some mistakes I, I made. But now the process is literally all you have to do is click on my group link. Um, it is a closed group, so I get a notification, so-and-so requires approval to join the Hungry Runner Challenge, and all I do is just approve, approve all, and I add, you know, hundreds of people at a time. Um, now, as far as what happens in the group daily, like, that's, that's all of my, my prep work. That's basically my process of coming up with a concept to running the event to getting the link to everyone to join my group. So once they're in my group and... As far as what happens in the group on a daily basis, it basically runs itself. Like I said, I have already gone into Hootsuite and posted the daily workouts to pop in uh, around like 545 in the morning, so I don't ever have to worry about a workout not being posted. Um, the only thing I do is I go in every day and like every single comment on the day's post. Um, there are hundreds of them every day, so I, I pop in, you know, as frequently as I can, and like, 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 like. Um, I do tell people in the beginning that if they need modifications to a workout, or if they have like a specific question for me, either tag me in the post, 
or um, send me a private message because like I said, there's hundreds of comments on every single daily workout post. Things get buried real easily. So if someone needs my attention, I will be more drawn to a post if they tag me in it or just send me a private message if they have something that's going on. Um, about once a week, I post a video message in the group. It's just basically telling everyone like, thanks for being awesome, keep up the hard work. Um, my goodness, you all complained a lot about inchworms yesterday, like what's up with that? You know, just something so that they see my face a little bit and they know that I'm not just, you know, a passive, you know, 5.45 a.m. These posts are automatically in there. I actually like, you know, show my face in there a little bit um, and just reiterate, you know, how proud I am of them for sticking through it. I, I really give them a taste of that motivation, accountability, support component which is like key in a challenge group. So I give them a make sure they get a taste of that. Um, I also throw in bonus posts, like maybe two, like one to two times a week. Um, they get posted in the evening. They have nothing to do with the group or fitness, but they get people engaged. Um, I literally just Google search icebreaker questions and I use those for inspiration. So it's like anything from what did you have for lunch today? Or show me a picture of your current running shoes. Um, or what is your most proud moment from the last 30 days? It, they really have, like I said, they have nothing to do with fitness or the group, but people love to talk about themselves. So I ask them questions and I engage them and get them and they start commenting on one another. Oh, I'm, I'm wearing the same shoes as you and all, all this stuff. So it's just basically a way for me to, um, elicit more engagement, keep people, you know, coming back and excited. And it's kind of like similar to how they would engage with one another in a challenge group. Um, so as you can see, like over the course of the group, I, I obviously give them a lot of fitness, but I subliminally sneak in the motivation, support, accountability component too. Um, I guess the only aspect of a challenge group that I don't really touch on in my free group would be like nutrition. Aside from like silly, what did you have for breakfast or lunch today? Um, so that's my group. That, that's, it's, it's up, it's running, we're, you know, we're going strong. People are loving their workouts. They're commenting every day on getting them done. They're, they're doing some fun icebreaker questions in the evening, telling me a little bit more about themselves, and that's cool. Um, so now it comes time to pitch for a challenge group. Um, so since my free groups begin on the first of every month, and my challenge group um, happens on the third Monday of each month, which is generally a uh, calendar wise between the 17th and 22nd ish. I will do my pitch around the eighth to the 10th of the month. So by this time they've been with me for a little more than a week. Um, they're, they're used to what I have to offer. They've seen my face a few times. I've encouraged them. So they're starting to get the hang of how this whole thing works. Um, I make a video quickly to talk about it. Um, I usually lead with something like, this isn't for everybody, but some of you have been asking me how to get more out of your daily workouts or you're ready for more. And so then I basically talk about the aspects of the challenge group. Um, I, I say it'll be just like this group, but in addition to focus. Looks like we're losing Sarah. Uh, she'll be back. Give her a moment. Yeah, I'll send her a message that way. She's just not blathering on and uh, <laughs> talking to nobody. Up to 57 people. Good job.
awkward. <laughs> Did you get a hold of her, Jason? Yeah, I sent her a message, so. She shows active on Facebook under the message, so she's probably just trying to log back in. She don't know what happened. She's trying. And she was just getting to the good stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. See, she knows how to tease. That's, that's the key is the teaser. That's right. And now the call to action. Out. Yeah. Lisa's face was priceless. I, but it wasn't just mine. Everybody was like, <laughs> 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 I focused in on yours. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I thought at first like my computer froze and it was just me so I was just like uh, uh I didn't know if it was just like everybody or <laughs> like John said it was like horrible timing this is like the, this is what we were waiting for mm -hmm. well, I can do a little sideshow and show everybody how to like do shots of uh, boost or detox <laughs> You know, <laughs> without water. Do detox. Detox, yeah. I've never, I've never done it with detox that way. I've done it with the Greens formula. I've done it with Energize, all that stuff, but never with detox. Detox is just sawdust, so, you know. Yeah, it is. I, well, you know what? I've done it with uh, it it normal psyllium, so. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have a shake to mix it with. There we go. What do you Trace, think? Tracy's what do you seen me do it with alkalinized, which is similar to the greens. So, what was that what question? What are, you, what are you drinking, Jason? Oh no, I was showing uh, um, grass. The, the five, yeah, the five or six people that were on early on, you know, how to how to just do a straight shot of the powder without any liquids. So, oh, just the powder, huh? Yeah, just pop it in your mouth and then swish it around with some water, and you're good. <laughs> <clears throat> you don't always have to have a chocolate shake to go with it. Oh. That's right. Yeah, I, f I first learned that with uh, um, so Jason, the ultimate, can, the ultimate can somebody, reset doing it with him. What's that? Can, can somebody get the greens and stay active just with the greens? Not with just the greens because I think that's probably only like 18 or 22 PV. Okay. Um, you, you would need greens and um, let's see. She, she, she couldn't use Energize because that's obviously going to put her on the, on the roof naked again. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do the combo of things. You know, you can also do the performance pack, so. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I'm back. The reason we're... Hi. There she is. Hi. Miss Sarah, Hi. you left Hi. everybody Hi. teasing. Hey, Dad, Tell Phil to behave. He literally, uh, I like screamed at him from the other day. I was like, come help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were just getting to the good stuff, Sarah, so continue. I just wanted to keep you all in suspense. Did it work? Is everyone yeah. still on that was here before? All right. Um, so oh, I was telling you that I have them fill out a WooFoo form um, if they're interested in the group. And basically, this is just a form um, like name, email address. Um, do they have like what are their current health and fitness goals? What does a typical day of your nutrition look like? Why do you want to be part of this group? Um, I also ask in this part if they um, have a beach body coach. Um, I know people ask me this if, if I do anything to gatekeep my group from not having coaches join. Um, honestly, I don't. With this many people, it would be very difficult for me to screen every single one of them. Um, with 3,000, 4,000 people, I'm pretty sure there's probably beach body coaches in there. Um, but I am confident that. I am in the group as the face of the group, building relationships with people um, that, you know, if, if any, anybody would sort of be in there poaching, um, I don't know, maybe I'm naive and I just believe the best in people, but I, I, I don't believe people would do that. And I just, I just really have confidence that I am um, earning the respect and the trust of people in my group so that um, when I put, you know, stuff in there, they're going to follow me. But I put this Beachbody coach question on the application because obviously I'm not trying to get coaches in my challenge group. 
whatever. If they're in my free group, fine, but they're not getting in my challenge group. Um, so I, that's, that's where I do the screening for if, if you're a coach or if you have a coach. Um, I respond to every single form with an email. Actually, it's one of two emails. If you answer yes, that you have a Beachbody coach you're currently working with, you get one email. And it's basically just, hey, laying this out here for you right now. Um, to get into my group, one of the very first requirement is that you be a customer of mine. I'm not looking to poach you from a coach you're already working with, but if somehow you know you bought P90X you know, seven years ago and you got randomly assigned to a coach and you don't even know who they are and you'd be willing to switch to me, that's awesome, but I'm not looking to take anyone away from a coach they're currently working with. Um, I would say I probably had about 90% people that have a coach will switch to me as their coach, but I have had people say, oh, okay, like, you know, I didn't realize what this was. I'm working with my sister-in-law or, or whatever, and so I'm not trying. The conversation pretty much ends there for those people. Um, if they do not have a coach, they get my standard uh, follow-up email. It, it basically, it is... It's modified to what they say their goals are. Like, you know how you, when you're applying for a job, you take the job description and your resume and you like cut and paste like the exact words into the resume so that you look like you're the most qualified candidate. Well, I take, um, you know, in, in the, the email to them, I'm talking about, you know, we have a, in the challenge group, we have a fitness component and it, this is how it works, DVD workouts. Uh, we have a nutrition component. Uh, da, 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 recipe sharing, Shakeology, and we have a support component. You're surrounded with like-minded individuals who are working on, on similar goals um, as you. So uh, then I take their specific uh, nutrition goals. Oh, you say that you have a hard time making healthy meals at night because you have three kids and they always have sports. Well, we have you know other moms in the group that are in the same situation as you, and they'll be more than willing to collaborate with you and share ideas and things like that. So I sort of kind of tailor it to make it show them like, hey, look, everything that you're saying you want, I've got that. Um, so I, I do, this is the point, yeah, it's basically just a paragraph about fitness. Generically, you know, what we do fitness-wise and what their fitness goals are tacked in on the end. It's a paragraph about nutrition, what we do focus on nutrition wise, and then tack in their nutrition goals at the end. And then it's a paragraph about support and I tack in, you know, a lot of them say that I, I just I struggle getting motivated or um, finding the time. And so I tack those little things in there. Um, I, the generic components of my email stay the same and then I just sprinkle their little individual needs um, and tweak them sort of, you know, throughout the email. And I, I usually finish the email and like apologize for being so lengthy, but you know, I tell them if it still sounds like something you're interested to let me know and I will proceed with my recommendations for a program for them. Um, so then that's basically the only email I have that's consistently the same sort of, you know, like I said, I tweak it, but it's the same email goes out to everyone. The way the email progression follows after that varies greatly um, based on what the people say to me. Um, if they express interest and they just sort of leave it like, yes, I'm still interested, I will go on with my recommendations for programs. Um, obviously, I, I, a lot of runners, usually PIO is one of the top recommended programs that I have for people because I know it's a, it's a game changer for the runners. Um, sometimes 21 Day Fix or you know, whatever I, I feel like they might need based on, on their needs. Um, so I'll send them a description of the workouts, and once again, I say, if this still sounds like something you're interested in, let me know, and I'll send you a video preview of the workouts to check out. Or if you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Um, so they'll get a video in one of the following emails. They'll get a video link, and you know they confirm once more, hey, I'm still interested. This is all still sounding good. And then um, the next email is I have them sign up as my customer. Um, I, once again, people say I'm crazy, but I do this for every single purchase that is made from somebody um, through me. Step one is fill out this link to be assigned to me as your free coach. Um, this is my catch-all because even though I ask them sometimes if you have a Beachbody coach, I have found more than one time that people do not realize they have coaches and they go in and if they're just you know buying products, it's going to their old coach. So I make everyone do this as a gatekeeper they step one is to sign up as me with me as your free coach and then step two will be the link to the challenge pack um 
I know I'll probably have questions about like, when does the cost conversation come up? Um, it varies. Some people straight up, they get my first email and they'll straight come back with, is there a cost to be involved in this group? So then I get into the cost then. Um, some people never ask. So if this is the case, um, once they are doing the sign up as my, um, for with me as their free coach, um, in the next email where I give them the challenge pack, I break down the price. I always remind them of everything it includes. So for example, 21 day fix. It comes with your workout program, your workout schedule, your nutrition guide, your portion control containers, your month of Shakeology, Shakeology Shaker Cup, access to the 60 day private you know, accountability group. And I'm also now throwing BOD in there. And free 30 days online streaming of Beachbody On Demand, which gives you access to a library of all these workouts and blah, blah, blah. And I always say, um, a price breakdown per day. So for example, like when the Pio um, is $140, I say, da, 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 da. So it breaks down to $2.30 a day. Um, I don't know, sometimes the number 140 just sounds so huge to people. And then um, I break it down to $2.30 a day and they realize they're getting, you know, for that price, they're getting a meal and a workout and the accountability, you know, all for that price. Um, sometimes I think it just makes it a smaller number and they're like, oh, that's not so bad after all. Um, I'm old school with pen and paper for tracking my responses. I literally have a giant Excel sheet printed off and I put their name and the date of first contact. And then there's a column where I check off um, that I sent them like the initial email, which is the follow up to their form that they filled out. Um, I have a, a box that I check if I sent them a video preview and which video preview or previews I sent them. Um, I have a check column if I check off that they signed up as my free customer. And then I have a column if to check off if they have purchased a challenge pack. Um, so I just basically keep track on, on that. And anybody who says they're not interested, just scratch them off the list. But I always, um, as it's getting close to uh, the first um, week of the challenge group, I go back and anybody who has not, you know, made it past the initial email, like you know, I sent them the initial email and then you know, never heard from them. I don't have any more checks in their column. Go back and follow up with them because people are just really bad at responding to emails sometimes. So I make sure that I get everybody to as many people as I can to the point of either continuing on and, and you know responding to my emails again or telling me no. Um, I want to know from you either way. So I just follow up, follow up, follow up with anybody who um, expressed any interest. Uh, make sure that I can get you know somewhat of an answer out of them. Um, I just wanted to share a couple, like I said, this has been a learning process. So a few mistakes that I have made that you know, maybe you might be able to learn from. Um, initially, I thought it was a great idea to have everyone friend me personally. So since this is a, a closed group, you can't just you know, get in. I thought it was cool to have everyone friend me on my personal Facebook account, and then I would add people to the group. And this works like you know, it was kind of time consuming when there was 100 to 200 people um, going to the event. But the one month that it came uh, over a thousand people had friend requested me and I was getting messages that saying, hey, we can't friend request you because your friend request limit is like maxed out. Um, Ask Jason and Leah how many times they had to talk me off the ledge that week when I had 1000 people that I was literally handwriting their names on paper and then going through and typing them into the group miserable. I, I thought it would be a great idea because it would get um, so much more um, traction on my personal page, um, but it ended up kind of biting me in the butt because it, it was a miserable three days uh, of doing that. Um, so eventually I threw up the white flag that month and just said, screw it. Here's the link. Everyone come on in. Just, just join. Um, but what happens now is still like tons of people from the group friend requests me all the time because I'm the one in there posting the daily workouts and giving them videos and stuff. So even though I don't do that initially, I still get friend requests every single day from people in the group. Um, so it's cool because when I'm posting just my daily life on, on Facebook, you know, I'm throwing those, um, jabs out there on my regular Facebook all the time. I've got way more eyes seeing them because all these people from my free group are liking my personal page. So, um, I sort of right hook them in the chat in the free group and then I write hook on my personal page when I'm promoting for a, a challenge group or something so um, it's still pretty cool and one month I did use a Google Doc I made everyone um, 
fill out like comment done on the daily workout. And then I made them also do a Google doc every day to, um, to track their workouts because I thought this would be an easier way for me to tally like who posted every single day so I could calculate for prizes at the end. Um, it just ended up being a lot of work and a lot of counting for me at the end of the month. So I've actually done away with the tracker doc. Um, most recently, like what I did for August is, um, I just picked a random day and everyone who commented on that day, your name went in a hat, you won a prize. So there's really, uh, it's not so much a, a reward for people who are consistent, but it sort of encourages you to be consistent because you don't know which day's workout I'm going to pick. And so you want to have all your workouts done so that the likelihood of your name going in the hat, you know, is, is better. Um, I, I, I always put a, a post at the beginning of, of the group with how to turn off notifications on a post because people get annoyed and complain all the time about the constant notifications. And I just want to say to them, try being me. It is one of me versus 3000 of you. Do you know how many notifications I get in a day? But some people, they, whatever, they don't like it. So I just do a little screenshot and show them how to like, um, turn off notifications, like unfollow notifications or something. Um, because yeah, people, people get annoyed with that. Um, so just to quickly tell you, um, a few numbers, um, my page likes in May, at the end of May, I had 4,500. Um, as of yesterday, I have 8,500. So that is approximately a thousand likes per month. And that is all from boosting one event for two days at $5 a day. So I'm not really good at math, but I think $10 a month for about a thousand likes is not too bad. Um, my July group that I posted um, had 2,100 people RSVP that they were going. My August group had almost 2,100 people RSVP they were going. September fell off a little bit and we had 800 people-ish say they were going. Um, but my success club points, like um, Greg said, have been up. Um, in our the July challenge group, I added 18 challengers. 10 of them are now coaches. Um, in my August, the August challenge group, I added 11 challengers, and I am in talks with at least six of them about coaching. So all of these people came from my free group. So you may hear this entire process and think that, gee, she certainly spends a lot of time in her free groups. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work initially, but like I said, once it's set up, the group runs itself. And if I'm spending and investing time in there and turning 10 coaches a month out of it, you know, all these challengers who turn into coaches, I say it's worth it that I'm investing in the free group. Uh, they're fun and I really enjoy doing them. So that pretty much sums up my process uh, from start to finish. Um, like I said, the group has been in existence since November. It was initially getting about 30 or 40 people a month. Um, but I took what a lot of, you know, other successful coaches were doing, uh, found little bits and pieces of what they did and tweaked it and made it my own to finally put all these pieces of a puzzle together into something that, that works for me. So, um, I definitely encourage you to learn from my process or take any little tidbits that might apply to you or you think could be helpful. But my bottom, bottom, bottom line is take it and make it your own. You know, put your ad and your event in your language. Don't say, hey, girl, are you looking for this or that? Like, just because that's how I talk. Like that, If it's not you, if that's not how you talk to people, it's not going to be work. Just make sure that you're selling you and promoting you through your event and your, and your free groups because people will, will see that. And that's why they'll want to join your challenge group. Um, so, yeah, that's like the end of my spiel. But I think people have questions I see popping up here or something. Sarah, I have, Sarah, I have a question. Um, are you a personal trainer? No. No? Okay. I have my master's in health and physical activity. So I do have some educational background in fitness, nutrition, obesity, fitness. Cool. No official certification. Hey, Greg, can I ask a question? Sure. Sarah, before you actually were disconnected, 
when you were frozen, you were talking about um, leading, you were talking about making the video. Um, and then when you came back, you were talking about the application. So in between the video and the application, did we miss anything? Um, you were saying that, that you tell them that you lead in with this isn't for everybody, but some of you have been asking for more, and then that's kind of where you were frozen. Yeah, so all I do in that video, hey, you know, uh, this isn't for everybody. Some of you have been asking for more, so you may or may not know this, but I actually run another type of challenge group every month. It's 60 days long. It's like this group, except more involved. We talk about fitness, we talk about nutrition, we have support, motivation, and accountability. And, you know, blah, 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 give them just like the spiel of a challenge group in like 20 seconds or less. So if you're interested, if this sounds like something that you might like, I'm going to put a link to a form in this post. Just fill out the form and I will be in contact with you with more information about how you join the 60 day group. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any more questions? Yeah, sir, I have a question. You, you say that you're doing 60 day groups. How do you keep the engagement so high for 60 days? One of the things that I went to a leadership training that was hosted by, um, by Jeff Hill and, and corporate yesterday. And that was a big conversation in the room was how do you keep the engagement up? And, uh, you know, I know in our groups, we're struggling in just a 30 day group. So how do you keep the, the juice flowing for 60 days? So I, um, I run my monthly challenge groups with Jason. Um, we do them together. We target runners. Um, this is something we've gone back and forth about, you know, should we, should we cut it down to 30? A lot of people are doing 30 these days, but we have continued to stick with 60 a lot based on the fact that uh, most of our runners, like I said, are doing PIO and it's a 60 day program. Um, and I feel like guilt, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here preaching that I, you know, I'm going to provide them with all this support, motivation, accountability that they need to finish their program. Well, what if, if I'm only with them for 30 days and they're doing a 60 day program like that, I'm only giving them half the support that they need. Um, I will say that, yeah, uh, engagement does die down maybe around week six or so. Um, but we just have, you know, weekly challenges, weekly bonus posts, you know, um, public act of fitness, you know, do, we, we provide them with, you know, their daily posts about fitness and nutrition and, and all that stuff. We try to put little fun games in there. Um, I say, you know, I don't really have a great answer for this. Some, some challenge groups are, are more in, engaging than others. Um, some of our groups, geez, Jason and I don't even need to be there. They, they run themselves um, with, with how, how much the, the, the ladies in the group just sort of pick up and encourage one another. Um, but I would say, I'm sorry, this is, this is not a great answer, but, you know, we just have sort of, you know, posts that we think will keep them engaged and keep them responding. We do um, a points tracker. We do give out points and prizes and stuff like that. So we kind of have a few incentives to sort of sort of keep them going. But there has been talk about, about cutting it down, but – you know, I, I feel like personally, I, I want to be with them, Hello. like for the completion of their program. Oh, that helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Were there any other questions on this chat thing here? Hey, Sarah, this is John Chantillo. Hey, John. The pants, some pretty awesome stuff. I appreciate it. I took two pages of notes. <laughs> uh, just one, one thing that I don't know if you know, but maybe it'll help you out at all. And I use this all the time. But once you get people's email addresses, uh, you can use that mobile enrollment app to screen all those email addresses to see which emails are associated with accounts already, who's a coach, who's a customer. So you have a little bit of inside knowledge before you go ask them, hey, do you have a coach? Oh. Uh, that, that becomes very powerful. I do that all the time. And uh, yeah. As far as inviting to the groups, you said it was a pain to have everyone friend you and then you could add them to the groups. Uh, you can also invite by email as well. So on the right, right where you add the person's name to the group, there's a thing that says invite by email. Just put an email address in there and they get an email that says click here to join the group. That's just another thing you can do if you want to invite people instead of uh, just throwing out links. Yeah, a good idea. Thanks. So, but this is all good. I'm going to have to start doing some of this. Yeah, definitely start doing it. And like I said, um, 
you know, like it, it didn't happen o- overnight. Like all of a sudden, no, I decided to start free groups and then bam, a thousand people were coming to them. It was like slowly building over time. And as I got, you know, more credibility and more people, you know, liking them, it sort of spread, the word spread and, and it sort of took off just one month. So, so you have a rolling free group. That must be growing month over month, right? How large is that now? It's pushing 4,000 right now. I think I added about um, 400 some this month. So it's up around 4,000. But like I said, uh, the number of comments on a daily post, um, three to 600. I mean, right. that's still pretty good. I'm not like knocking that at all, but um, it, it's obviously not 4,000 people responding every day, but um, all those people, um, you know, seeing what I have going on there. And then, like I said, many of them over the past months have a friend requested me personally. So they're seeing what I'm doing on a daily basis that I'm yep. not just talking the talk. I'm walking the walk in, in my daily life. So when I put, you know, a right hook out on my personal page, all these people, you know, message me about it. And I'm like, I, you must know you from the challenge group because I have no clue who half the people that message me on my personal Facebook are anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's all about eyeballs and you're getting the eyeballs. So that's exactly, it. that's what I want. Yeah, that, that was my initial thinking with make them friend request me first. I wanted the eyes, but that, that got out of hand. But um, so, yeah, I still get at least some new eyes every month. Yeah. For, for those of us who are still getting like 60, I think we can continue the friend request method, right? Yeah. <laughs> I recommend doing it though, because um, yeah, you know, whatever people may lose interest in your, in your free group or something like, you know, even the best group people, you know, life happens and, and they don't pay attention there. But if you've got their eyes on your regular Facebook and they see what you're doing there, you post a challenge group there or something there, you know, that's still, you know, <clears throat> we all say we're always worried about our warm market running out. Well, that's like, you know, constantly, you know, increasing your warm market of people that you're already friends with on Facebook that are going to see your stuff. Hey, Sarah, when you, when you, um, when you pitch the next group, do you have anyone that, that says, you know, they can't afford the challenge pack and can they only purchase a program, anything like that? Um, sometimes I, I will have people ask and, and I, I go back and forth. Um, I don't know, I'm a softie. I, I don't like to say no to people. I do really encourage and I, I try to explain why um, the program plus the Shakeology plus the access to the group. I say, hey, that goes back to my uh, um, the formula that I told you before where it was like fitness component, nutrition component, support component. Like I'm trying to give you all of this and I really do try to stress the importance of it. But um, I have been known to let people into my groups um, who do not purchase challenge packs. Um, right. And one such person that I, I just, you know, formed a really great relationship with, she had a program from before and I just said, you know what, like I, I really can see that you need the support. And so I let her in and you know, she didn't buy anything off of me and she's one of my Emerald coaches now. So I don't usually discount anybody who, who doesn't you know, buy a challenge pack initially because I'm, I'm confident that, that they'll still be loyal to me um, as a customer. Yeah. Now, when you move them, when, when they do migrate into the challenge group, do you remove them from the free group? Nope. They stay okay. in and all of them do challenge group workouts and they do my daily workouts. I have coaches of mine that, have, that I met originally that joined my free group that then joined a challenge group. They're now coaches of mine and they still do my daily workouts in my free group. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sarah, it's Jason here real quick. Um, I think I know the answer to this, uh, but I don't think you said it, and I think it'd be interesting for the masses. Now, I know you start the first of the month um, with your group. How long, if somebody wants to put this in place, say for October, how long in advance should they start building? You know, should it be two weeks, three weeks, one week? How long would it take for somebody brand new doing this to put this together, this process, so they can do a free challenge the 1st of October? I would say by the third week of September, they should start, um, you know, I, I have ideas already, you know, whenever you get inspired through the month, if your challenge group, if it's September 2nd, I already have an idea floating around for something in October that I, I sort of want to make come to life. And so I already have it written down. And over the course of this month, as I have downtime, I will, you know, explore it further. I, I check out, you know, some of my different like Pinterest I use for a lot of inspiration or, or stuff. Um, but I say at least two weeks because it's, it's honestly as soon as, you know, our challenge group gets rolling on, on the second or third Monday of the month and that's going, 
and I say, you know, I have my little monthly checklist of everything I do to prep for a challenge group. After everything on there is checked off by the third Monday of the month, I have printed out my next month checklist and I start working on all the steps to prep for my free group for October. I start thinking of the theme. I start putting a little tidbit on my blog about what's going to be coming in October. I start making the daily form or the daily picture posts that have all the workouts on them. I start scheduling them into Hootsuite. So I would say at least two weeks of leg work I do every month to get ready to roll for the next month's free challenge. Okay, I have another question. I hate to be such a pain in the butt. <laughs> Not at all. Um, so my question, thank you. <laughs> my question is, you are providing incredible value, like tremendous ongoing value. I am just kind of shocked not shocked, but I mean, I, I understand why, but I'm just trying to get the gist of if you're providing so much value, why people, what, what are you separating your challenge group other than for your free group is the components of the fitness, nutrition and everything, or I'm just trying to figure out why they would want to leave for, to pay for something if they're getting the value for kind of for free, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, um, the posts are scheduled automatically every morning. And the only thing I do is like, every, everyone says done. I say like, um, oftentimes people post questions in the group about different things. I'm not in there 24 seven answering their questions about fitness or about this. Like I said, they can email message me privately if they need a modification, but I'm not in there, you know, telling them people oftentimes just tell me about their day. They're commenting like done. And then I did this, this, and this. And, I'm training for a half marathon or doing this, like what would be a good, uh, you know, exercise to stretch out this muscle? I, I don't really answer those. I sort of let some of those questions just sort of go unanswered. People in the group other times will pick up on that. But um, one of the other things I mentioned in my video when I'm pitching a challenge group is you guys think I spend a lot of time in this group. You should see how much time I spend in my 60 day group. I spend so much more time in there with them. They get so much more from me and they get, I really just um, stress the accountability support aspect because I say nine out of 10 people fill out that form and they say, I need the motivation to get up and work out every day. I've lost my motivation. I, I don't have the drive to do it. And I say, listen, if you want the place where you have a smaller intimate group where you get more one-on-one -on -one attention from me as well as other like-minded individuals. This is where you want to be if you really want to achieve X, Y, and Z goal. Um, so the challenge groups, I, I do spend way more time in there, way more engagement in there, way more talking to them in there. Um, I just try to give them, you know, a little taste of all of those components in the free group. But I think the pitch for the challenge group is appropriate for those people that are looking for more. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. That's definitely what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sarah, it's Amber. I have a question. Um, so in the beginning, before all of this, before you um, actually people responded to your uh, video about going to the next step. So when you were only getting a few people, when you would post the video for the, the paid challenge group, <clears throat> If no one responded, what did you do? Like, did you just reach out to the people personally? Um, uh, so, so pretty much because none of us have, well, me, but have these people coming into my group. In the beginning, what did you do? Like, if no one responded or, I mean, how did you approach the next step? <laughs> um, in the beginning, I actually, like, when there wasn't as many people in the group, I was just the same generic challenge group teaser post that I would put on my personal Facebook wall, I put in the private group. I wasn't even making videos to explain more to them about it until I had several thousand people in, in the group. So initially it was just the same as you would put a um, teaser post on your Facebook wall and say, Hey, are you looking, you know, 60 days of fitness, nutrition, and accountability to uh, achieve, you know, this weight loss result or whatever it is. 
um, I would put them in there. And I don't know, even, even when I didn't have that many people in the group, I would still be able to get, I, I say back then I was doing um, just as much challenge group teaser posts in my private group. I was still doing them on my personal Facebook wall, which is something that I don't really do now. So I would say that the combination of posting it in a free group where I had all these new eyes to see it and posting it on my um, regular Facebook page where I had basically my warm market, all the people that had told me not right now in the past, those combination of things is how I used to get my success club points. Now I don't really post for challenge groups on my personal Facebook page anymore. I can get enough people in my challenge groups to fill them up via just the private group if that makes sense. Hey, Sarah, do you know, like, um, the thousand people, do you know where they're coming from? Are they coming from the targeted ad? Are they coming from referrals? Or are they coming from your organic reach? Do you have that? Um, I actually can look because I, I do have the, um, I, I, and I meant to, like, write this down, but I knew I was taking, like, way too many notes. I do have, like, on the three events, like, the event for, um, July for August and September. Those are the three that were really big. Um, I have the the numbers on my like results, my ad ad results page. I can like look them up and post them and see what they are. I think I looked today. One of them was like three point four thousand um, organic reach on one of the ads that I boosted. Um, but I'm not sure of the exact numbers, which breaks down from referrals and people that I targeted through my ad boost. Yeah, that'd be interesting if you do have any of those numbers, you know, like, like who come, who came from people who were already following your page versus, you know, referrals that people referred their friends versus your $10 ad, right? So. Yeah. I'll look that up. Any more questions? Good, because it's almost my bedtime here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. I think uh, you definitely answered a lot of questions that people have, and hopefully they'll go out and start running some awesome free groups now. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, everyone. All right, good night. Thank you, Sarah. Good night.